This week, our focus is on light and how light occurs from certain atoms as emission occurs and why the electrons are important in determining the color or the type of light that is emitted. And the first thing we need to start with is the two components that make up light. Light is a very complex thing that is made up of particles that we call photons and waves. And this concept is kind of difficult to understand and it's very difficult to demonstrate mathematically because it doesn't really behave like a particle and it doesn't really behave like a wave. It kind of behaves like both. So in order to understand it, we have to describe it as both. So the term photon is used to describe the particles of light and the first person who came up with the idea that photons existed was Einstein. So we're going to get into each of these components and why they're important. So to start out with, Einstein's idea of the photon was used to explain something called the photoelectric effect, which you will learn a little bit about in class. Um, the photoelectric effect is basically when light shines on a certain surface, electrons can be basically knocked out of that surface by the light shining on it. And this can't really be explained if light is just a wave. So he came up with the idea of photons. Alright, so let's start with this definition. Photons are particles of light. with a specific amount of energy. Okay, so these diagrams are going to help us be able to explain what's going on in an atom when light is absorbed by atoms and when light is emitted by atoms. Um, Atoms in general absorb lots of different types of light and it uh, depends on the energy of the electrons in their different orbitals and in the, uh, the different energy levels of the atom. If light hits an atom with the exact amount of energy that is the difference between two different energy levels that that electron can transfer between, the atom can absorb the light or take that energy from the light in. And what that causes the atom to do is to uh, take that photon energy, and that energy will cause the electron to jump up to a different energy level. And this is because now this electron has more energy than it got from the light, and it jumps up to a higher energy level. Um, if the energy coming in from the photon is a little bit lower, that electron could maybe jump from a, a smaller difference in energy, like is seen here. This is only, for example, one energy level. Um, but up here we had two different energy levels, so that means this light had more energy to knock this electron up to the higher um, energy level. Okay, so then we get to emission. So this is the opposite of absorbing energy from light. This is when an electron jumps down in energy and when that happens, that energy has to go somewhere. And in order to do that, the atom actually can release photons, can create photons and release them. So that means that this material can be just sitting around and then all of a sudden the light can come out of it because that electron jumped down in energy. Now photons are very small, so this has to happen on a large scale, lots of different atoms having their electrons move down in energy and releasing photons in order for you actually to be able to see it with your eye. So, like, this is the opposite of what we see on, for absorption. When an atom emits light or sends that photon out, this is because this electron moves to a lower energy level, thereby releasing that energy in the form of light. Okay, and so this light would have more energy because this is a bigger difference a bigger step down in energy than this electron over here jumping down with one energy level this light that comes out would be a little bit lower energy okay so these terms are really important for you to know absorption and emission emission just means release energy or 
particles, like we learned before in radioactivity. And absorption means take in energy or particles. Okay. So if we think about light at, in the component that is a wave, we have to understand some different things about waves. You've probably learned this before, that wavelength is the, the length of the wave from one trough to trough or one crest to crest. So what that means is either the distance between the two uh, tops of the waves or the two bottoms. Should be exactly the same distance for the top and the bottom of the wave. Okay, so this is distance from trough which means bottom, to trough, or crest, which means top, like the crest of a mountain, to crest. Okay. So then, to think about frequency, frequency is the rate at which the wave passes through a given point. So say, say I put a line right here the number of times it passes through uh, the point, here I'm going to compare these two right here. So let's say I take this section right here. Okay, that's kind of crooked line, so yeah, oh well, you'll see my point. So if we look here, the wave from this point will pass through that line I drew one time, two times before we get to this other bar here. So if we look at this one, it's going to cross through one, two, three, four, five times before we get to the other side. So this means that this one has a higher frequency, and this one is a lower frequency. You can think of that as more frequent or less frequent, okay? Because uh, frequent just means how often. Amplitude is basically just the height of the wave. So if we compare these two waves in the bottom here, um, we can look from the center point of the wave up to each of these crests, and whichever one has a greater height has a greater amplitude. So that means this little blue line has a lower amplitude, and this, uh, the wave that's represents the black line has a greater amplitude. Okay, so height. That's not right. Height of the wave. Okay, so those are our different definitions that we need to know to be able to talk about waves. But we're going to pretty soon get to actually calculating things. Okay, so. The electromagnetic spectrum, you can think about this as the spectrum of light in general. And this is all the, what we're talking about, the particle and wave nature light. And this, this shows us the different wavelengths and frequencies for all the different types of light that exist. Now the only types of light that we can actually see are called visible light. And that's because our eyes are not very good at detecting things outside of a certain range. But certain instruments are able to detect these other types of light, such as x-ray machines can detect x-ray light. Um, your uh, car radio can detect radio wave light. Okay, so these are all just different wavelengths, and depending on what instrument you're using, you can pick up uh, information about those, but your eyes can only pick up a certain range. And so here it has looked at this section called visible, which is represented by this wavelength here, and it shows the different colors in the visible range. And so if you spread that out, you can see the full range of the different colors that your eye can actually detect. Um, 
each of these different colors has a slightly different energy, and we're going to learn about how to calculate those. All right. So these are the equations that you'll need in order to be able to calculate um, anything related to light. So the energy of light, the frequency, the wavelength, etc. Okay. And so we're going to use an example uh, to be able to understand these equations. But first I need you to make sure you write down these equations. C equals lambda nu, that weird squiggly looking thing. This is called lambda, and it's a Greek letter. And this right here, it looks like a V, but this is called nu. It's another Greek letter. And this one represents the frequency. Okay. So make sure you write that down. The little weird squiggly V is frequency, and the weird squiggly, I don't know what you would call that, thing is wavelength. That's lambda. I don't know how you're actually supposed to spell it, but lambda is the weird squiggly thing. This is new. Okay? All right? And then speed of light is C. Okay? The speed of light is a constant. This means it never changes and it's always the same. And so it shows us down below what the value of the speed of light is. So C is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th power meters per second. So meters per second is what we use when we want to express how fast something's moving. And if it's 10 to the 8th power, it's moving pretty fast. And we know the speed of light is really fast. So this is how fast light is always moving. Okay? All right. Now the other equation is E equals H nu. And you might guess E is the energy. So this would be the energy of a photon, the energy of light, okay? And H is Planck's constant. It tells you down here what Planck's constant is. Now this guy, scientist named Planck, came up with it to be able to calculate the energy of a photon. And you have to use this content, constant to be able to do it. The uh, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. This is a super tiny number. And the unit is joules per second. Or joules times seconds. Sorry. Okay, so that means that those units can help us figure out what the units of our other um, constants are. The unit of energy is going to be joules. So if you see joules in a problem, you should assume that's energy. And V, once again, or nu, is our frequency. And frequency has a unit of 1 over second, or seconds to the negative 1 power. That's the same thing, because that negative 1 power just makes the S move to the denominator, so it becomes 1 over second. Okay, so that's the unit of nu. All right. So if you see that unit, you're probably talking about your frequency. And I forgot to mention that if we're looking at wavelength, that unit will be meters. And this is, once again, uh, our 1 over second for the unit. And so the speed of light, that's how we get meters per second for the speed of light. Okay, meters divided by seconds. Okay. So those are all of our units and what every... Um, piece of the equation actually it stands for. So now we're going to use it in a problem. We want to calculate the frequency of, or we want to, we're given the frequency of green light. See it says seconds to the negative one power. So that's our given information, the frequency. And first it's asking us to calculate the energy. So we need to use an equation that has energy in it. The only equation that has energy in it is E equals H nu. And in order to use that, we need to see that it actually has frequency in it, which it does. Nu is the frequency, so we can plug in our frequency into that equation to get the energy. Okay, and then we know that our H is a constant. So that means to get the energy, all you have to do is multiply 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times 6.00 times 10 to the 14. All right. So in the next video, we'll actually finish solving this and see how to calculate the wavelength.